This video is not quite about the diet. I mean, it, it kind of ties in, but um, bear with me and let's see if I can make the point. So when my girls were young, um, I read a book about skills that every kid should have. And I mean, it, it's, it was a long list and they have like age ranges. Like by the time a child is five, they should be able to do, and then they had a list of things. Uh, by the time they're eight, they should be able to do this. Uh, 12, they should be able to do this. And I was reading that and I was looking at my own kids. I think my kids were all, they were all under 10 at this point. And I had already had them kind of helping out here and there around the house but I didn't really know where to start. And often as a parent, you get that idea of like, well, it's just faster if I do it myself. And it's like, right now it's faster if you do it yourself. Down the road, and I, I've seen this with some people that I know, down the road, you're going to be doing everything because you can't get your kids to help. So instead, get them involved when they're young. You can get them to start following you around the house. Take them with you as you go to clean. Give them a small job, something little, and have them do it with you. Um, so when my kids were all under 10, we used to do something that we called, well, I called it top to bottom cleanup. They hated it, but it was, <laughs> I'm like, I don't care if you hate it. This is what we're doing. We would start, we had a three-story house at that point, um, but we would start at the top and we'd clear out their bedroom of all of the dirty clothes that they had in there, any trash, any things that were piling up. And we would work our way down to the first floor until we're down and we get the entire first floor cleaned up. I say three floors, but it wasn't that big. So cleaning did not take that long. It was like maybe like an hour and a half um, of us working as a team. And then throughout the week, we would just try to keep things tidy. So when we moved into our new home, uh, which was bigger, and here's something kind of funny. Before we moved into this house, I used to look at other people's homes. I'd be like, oh, that house is so pretty. Look how big it is. It's so nice. Now, I wasn't wanting a big house. I just had it in my mind that big houses were pretty and they looked nice and et cetera, et cetera. Well, then we moved into a bigger house. Um, it's not massive, but it's it's bigger and I'm like kind of kicking myself for ever wanting to live in a bigger house because bigger house means more to clean. <laughs> so anyway, um, so what we started doing though, and at first I had the kids with me when I did it and then gradually I would just assign them the task. We started cycling through the chores. So um, on the first floor, we had the kitchen, the dining room, the living room, and then the school room. And what we would do is um, one week I would be in charge of the kitchen, one child would be in charge of the living room, et cetera, et cetera. And the next week we would cycle. This way, no one person is in charge of the kitchen every single week. So for the first few weeks, um, we they would follow me through the chores and not follow me. They would be doing it with me. And I wrote down a list of all the things that needed to be done in that room so they didn't have the excuse of, oh, I didn't know I was supposed to do that. No, no, no. You check the list. So uh, for a long time there, I would also have to follow up with them. I would go and check their work and make sure that they did everything that they were supposed to do. And if they didn't, I would call them back in and have them do it. Now, I hope no one thinks that my kids were just happily and cheerfully doing this work. They, as though they loved it and were singing through the job, they did not. There were complaints, there were sour faces, especially if I had to call them back in. So you have to harden yourself and just say, I, I don't care. This is your job. This is what you're supposed to do. And But also trying to teach them at the same time, if you have a bad attitude, you're not, this job is going to be miserable. It's better if you can try to have a good attitude, be thankful for the work, be thankful that you can do the work um, and just try to be cheerful while you're getting it done. And I realized I had to demonstrate that myself. I had to be the one who was having a cheerful attitude as I was going about the work, which isn't always easy. So anyway, um, after a while though, it got to the point where I didn't have to check their work anymore. Now, it's funny because... I've got 
So my girls are 21, uh, almost 19, and almost 17. Um, there are times when I will like be like, hey, you forgot to do this. And they're like, oh, I, sorry about that. I forgot. I'll take care of it. So that's the stage that we're at now. I still will double check their work sometimes and be like, hey, take care of this. And they'll do it. So um, now that wasn't the only thing that I got them involved with. Um, they've been helping out with laundry since they were old enough to like fold clothes. And I mean, granted, they didn't do a very good job in the beginning. Um, and so there are some things that they still like, they just, oh my goodness, I have trying to get them to fold sheets properly is painful. But anyway, um, when we moved into our new home and because everyone was bigger, so the clothes were all bigger. We, we used to do laundry all in one day we do like five or six loads in one day. Well, I, we weren't able to do that in the new house. So what we had to do was, um, split the laundry up into different, we, over the course of four days, we get the laundry done. So it's like one or two loads a day. Everyone's responsible for a day and that cycles also. Um, and then let's see, what else did we do? Oh, bathroom chores because our house has three bathrooms. That's a lot for like one person to take care of all the bathrooms. No, 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 no. So we have one day where we tackle the bathrooms and that's also a cycle kind of thing. And then the last thing I want to tell you guys about was getting them involved in the kitchen, having them learn how to cook. Um, I wanted to teach them the basics. I wanted them to learn, you know, not just how to cook, but how to take care of the kitchen after you're done. So what we did there was Initially, I had all three of them in the kitchen with me at the same time. That was not a good idea because I can't direct all three of them, you know, doing stuff at the same time. We do that for Thanksgiving. Uh, all three of them are helping out, but uh, on a daily basis, no. So what I started doing was one kid per week, I would be training. And what I would do is like, okay, this is your week. I want you to plan the meals and you write up the grocery list. And if you're missing something for one of your meals, that's that's on you. You forgot to write it down. So we have um, a recipe. We have our own recipe book that they can pull the recipes out and double check and make sure that they have all the ingredients. So that was really great. Um, each of them taking a turn. And then I only had to cook every four weeks, um, except unless there was something that they were making that I couldn't eat on this diet then I'll make something for myself, but it really isn't a big deal. Now, since my youngest daughter has been sick, um, I've been picking up her slack. Uh, she cannot cook. She can't do her chores and stuff like that. So I'll do her week of cooking. I'll do her laundry. And then the my other two daughters help pick up the chores. So I was thinking how much more difficult this time period would be if I hadn't trained my daughters to help out around the house. If they had no, not, it would all be on me to try to manage all this. And that would be a, an extremely heavy burden for me to try to carry. So I'm extreme. I'm very, very thankful that I taught them. And I mean, I'm not patting myself on the back for this. I believe that God put the information in my path because one of the other things too is, um, whenever I've had to go through the rounds of weakness, I can count on my daughters to cook. You know, um, even if they're not going to make the same meal that I was going to make, I don't care. They know how to cook and take care of the things that they need to take care of. So I can just direct them and say, hey, I'm not going to be able to cook today. Can you go make this instead? And they'll do it. And I don't have to worry about it. You know, I don't have to worry about the house being burned down or whatever. They can pick up the slack if necessary. So to me, not training your kids to do these things is a bit like shooting yourself in the foot. You can't predict the future. You don't know what's going to be coming down the road and you don't know what's needed. It's better to prepare them completely for whatever case, um, whatever comes up. So anyway, I hope this helps someone out there. It, seems, it sounds like a massively daunting task especially if your kids are little. But you don't have to have it be a daunting task. You can take it in small chunks, take little bits at a time. 
teach them. I mean, start with the very, very basics and then build from there. I mean, you already taught your child how to speak, how to use the bathroom, how to dress themselves, how to brush their teeth. This is the same kind of thing. They weren't perfect the first time they brushed their teeth, right? They weren't perfect when they first started using the bathroom. So this is something that you can do. Don't look at it as an impossible task. If you do that, it's going to be impossible. Look at it as an adventure. This is going to be interesting. It's going to be fun. Well, it can be fun. You're the one who decides that. I think that's about it. This is going to, this is a slightly longer video than normal. But anyway, thank you so much for listening. Bye.